to my identity in Christ Church. Our church vision is to establish Christ at the center of people's lives. We will accomplish this goal through our church mission initiatives, which is to teach people how to discover their purpose and fulfill it. Discover their identity in Christ and embrace it. Build godly relationships and marriages that glorifies God on the earth. This is what success looks like to us. Seeing people walking in their identity, seeing people living a life of purpose, having Christ-centered relationships. This is what success looks like to us. We see a church that helps you to be more Christ-like at work. We see a church that helps you to be more Christ-like in your families. We see a church that teaches you, disciples you on how to develop a closer intimacy with God. We see a church that helps you and encourages you to develop your gifts and talents. Our goal as a church is to have impacted the lives of one million people by the 31st of December 2030. My identity in Christ Church is not just a place where people gather. This is a church that's on the move to disciple people and see Jesus Christ at the center of everything they do and experience in their lives. For more information and on how you can be part of this vision, Last week, you guys know I was studying Joshua and Rahab. Uh, I really enjoyed their story in Joshua chapter 2. Sometimes God keeps you in the scripture for a long time, just to kind of tease out as much as you can from that scripture and see it in a very, very new way. And just to give you a bit of context, in Numbers chapter 13, we're not going to do it, don't worry. The Bible says that God spoke to Moses and tells him to send it out one man from each tribe to spy out the land of Canaan. And we know the story very well. Ten of them come back with a negative report. Two of them had a positive report. But the ten were able to so infiltrate the rest of the camp that they are not able to take the land. And in Joshua chapter 2 verse 1, after Joshua chapter 1, if you ever want to have courage, if you're 
really scared of doing something. Even when you're going to perform or you're going to go into public speaking or something, I encourage you to read Joshua chapter one. See how God speaks to Joshua and have courage. Tells him not to worry, not to have any fear. Tells him to trust him. So in Joshua chapter one, Joshua is full of courage and is excited and is ready to do what God wants him to do. And in Joshua chapter two, the Bible says, and then Joshua secretly. This is the first difference of what Joshua did. Secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at a case of gold, instructed them, scout the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rebecca and stayed there that night. Secretly, Joshua sent out two spies. The first time in Numbers chapter 13, God, so in case we blame Moses that Moses did not have the right strategy, God told him to send out spies, one from each tribe. And one of the things I'm going to show you in this scripture is that sometimes God can give a word and a promise, but God has attached himself to us as believers so that the fulfillment of the purposes that he has for us. And for the world is dependent as much on us as much as it is on him. As much on us as much as it is on him. Right? You know, so for those who are single, we pray for marriages in your life. See, for those who are single, you can pray, 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 and I'm going to bring you the right spouse. Unless that spouse cooperates with God and they marry you, they all be you, know, you can just keep praying. So we have to also pray for the cooperation of that spouse, the agreement of that spouse. When we're at the show to Isaac, they just said, well, let's ask the young woman, let's see what she thinks. If she wants to marry me, if she wants to go with you guys, she can go with you guys. If she doesn't, then we'll see what's happening. So God, the God of the universe, the God of the whole world, has attached himself to us and has made the full fulfillment of his word. Some of it is based on us. So these people have a promise, they have a plan, they have something that they are to do and they don't achieve it because the people that God has attached themselves to don't do their part. They go, they scout the land and they don't see the right thing. So the second time around, the, the word of God hasn't changed, they're still going to conquer Canaan. It hasn't changed. It's not that like God has changed his mind. It's not that like God doesn't want to bless you. It's not that like God doesn't want to Help you out because God doesn't want to bring that thing about. But sometimes, because God delights in the cooperation of human beings, us, and we might be the 10 spies, we might be reading the video and the Joshua and Caleb, maybe you're the 10 spies in this story. So, the second time, I really like it, it's like there's a slightly different strategy. We learn from the first time and we go again. When we go again, there's a slightly different strategy. The promise is the same, the promise giver is the same. But now we're finding a lot more wisdom. We see it many times, and I said to God, but I want to see how else, how else has this happened, and what other examples. And I said, I'm taking through the whole of Scripture, as I can show you how sometimes in Scripture, when it's waiting upon man, a lot of things, God always tested our patience, but I think the person is patient, except for because of God's patience. If you think about how much you have to wait, or how much you have to do the right things, or you're waiting for God to do something for you. You think about how much God has had to wait for people just to turn to him and take him seriously, for people to believe in him. And even on top of that, he doesn't want to believe in him. God is the ultimate example of patience. He says that the Lord is not slow to anger. God, if the Lord is slow to anger, this is waiting. He's waiting. It's not that he can't take judgment, and he's waiting to give people a chance to change. And if we keep seeing the scripture over and over and over again, we keep seeing that God always has a plan to use man for part of his redemption story, but he always needed man to cooperate with him. Cooperate with him. How much more for us when we need another person to come to us and we might be an employer that needs to agree with you. It might be somebody that needs to approve a loan. It might be somebody that needs to approve an application. It might be somebody that needs to be somewhere. That's true, generally, in the physical realm, it seems like unless that person is there, or unless that person says yes, that thing might never happen. But God is a God of second chances, third chances. I think chances like because something failed, 
No, no, I want you to understand, honestly, God's word is still true is going to happen. But God is going to give you another opportunity for his word to be fulfilled. I know what's so wonderful about God, that generation of people, eventually, unfortunately, we know that the generation has to follow, the generation has to take its place. But what I love about God is that God still did not take the promise away from the children of Israel. He could say, well, since most of you are not obeying me, I'm going to take the promise away completely from you. All God needed was one person, two people who were obedient. God is always looking for a remnant. So even when you see in any situation that you find yourself, I'm going to say this to people, you know that kind of work in an environment that's toxic, an environment that's negative, or you, you live in a community where nobody believes in God, everybody's negative. And people are like, I'm the only Christian there. I'm saying that is a powerful position to be. God can do a lot for the only Christian there. God can do a lot from the only Christian there. It's a powerful thing to be, a powerful, powerful position to be. All it took was a David to flee. Even Saul came to David and threw everything at him. He goes, Where my armor? Where my armor? And he's looking at him and I'm going to do this. I believe and I know what I serve. And all God needed was one David to defeat one Goliath. Sometimes you don't need all the circumstances to be aligned, and everything to be agreement, everything to see the word of God in your life the way you see it. You don't need it. You don't need 20, 30, 40 people to validate you. You don't need the whole community to agree with you. You don't need the bosses to agree with you. You don't even need a Christian leader to agree with you. All you need to understand is quiet and to take action in obedience to the word of God. Because God will always find a way. Sometimes your obedience can be what's fast. And encourages another person. So today I want to encourage you. Our prayer this morning is that learn from last time. Learn from last time, there will be another opportunity. Because God said it's his word, it's going to be another opportunity. My last example I want to give is that someone that we know very well, Abraham. I know Abraham is Sarah, but I love this story. And we know the book of Abraham in the book of Genesis, and the Bible tells us about Abraham and Sarah. We know that over and over again, you know, God tells him, I'm going to give you a child, I'm going to give you a child. And he writes, Why can you give you a child? I'm going to make you a father of nations. You know, that means that I'm going to give you one child. I'm going to make you a father of nations. And then he's like, There's no child, there's no child. And then he writes, Hold on, he thinks, You know what? Fine, you're not going to do it through me. Fine. You're clearly not going to do it for Sarah. Fine. So maybe it's my servant you're going to do it through. That's his mindset, that's his belief. So, okay, it's not for my servant, because this is not your servant. Then Sarah gives him a ridiculous suggestion, take my servant down. If I can taste the servant down, we all know that was a big mistake. An avoidable mistake, he takes the servant down. Because even at that time, if I was to appreciate, I need to have Sarah. It has to be through me and Sarah. So he had the servant, and he says to God, maybe it's Ishmael then. Maybe you're going to do it for Ishmael. And God was like, no, it's not Ishmael. And we know Abraham doesn't quite understand that it must also be Sarah. Because on two occasions, he puts her in harm's way, where almost somebody else is able to violate her and corrupt her. But God said to each time. And God is like, no, it's not. And eventually, God comes and appears to Abraham. We know the story, I think we shared it in a different message a few weeks ago. He appears to Sarah and Abraham. He comes to their home. Sarah feeds them. And then he speaks to Sarah and she's laughing because she hears it because now God says, this particular woman, this woman, Sarah, in a year's time, is going to have a child. And now the promise is not just about you only, the promise is about her as well. Because God is always clear about his word from the beginning. I want to encourage us today, what is the word that God is giving us? What is the word that God has spoken to us? And in the physical world, it looks like there is no way it could ever come to pass. Or, it looks like the person that I'm supposed to partner with, imagine how Sarah felt. Clearly, it really is not me, because my husband isn't even behaving like it's me. But how is that even possible? But it was always going to be her, and it was always going to be her. I want us to pray this morning that the love of the Lord that he has given to us in our lives, our family past, I want you to remind yourself of any promises that the Lord is giving you today. This is a day 
to be reminded, to believe, to trust in the Lord. This is the day to hold on to it. I want you not to look at anybody's face or anybody who has spoken, even if the person has If it's a business between you and this specific person and it's not happening, even if it's something as strong as language and it's not happening, I want you to speak to the Lord and just trust the Lord that the Lord that has told you will come through, will work for the words of God to come. In due season, in time, and this is why I go back to the beginning of when I started. It's a test of patience. It's a test of patience. It's a test of patience. God is taking you on a journey of patience. God is asking you to wait. Are you going to trust me or go ahead of me? Are you going to trust me or doubt me? Are you going to trust me or raise a fear in your heart and have anxiety to rob you of my word? Or are you going to trust me and let my word come to pass? Are you going to trust me? It's a test of patience. It will happen, even if it doesn't look like it's happening right now, because somebody is standing in your way. I want you to trust God that it will happen. Even if the situation makes it like it's going to be really hard for it to happen, like Abraham and Sarah, I want you to trust God that it will happen. Even if you're like Joshua and Caleb and the rest of them, the whole nation are agreeing that it's not going to happen. I want you to trust God that it's going to happen. If God has spoken it, I want you to trust God that it's going to happen. So as we go to a time of worship and praise today, I just want us just to keep that in our hearts. Father, teach me to trust you, to trust your word that it will happen. We thank God this morning. Yeah. We could just bow our hands. We could just be welcome to the time of worship. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In the
People would say, oh, I don't think, but we must ask them, what they say does it align with Scripture? Because God says, all things have passed away, be all old things have become new. I'm no longer who I used to be. Am I looking for something that's changed in the struggle? The old things have passed away. Be all old things have become new. So my life now is lived to the next scripture. Everything I do must be lived to the next scripture. What's that? Well, that should be my hope to do. So when we talk about a biblical world, you were saying, God no longer will I do things my way. No longer will I do things my way. No longer will I approach matters or challenges my way. But from now on, I'm going to approach it God's way. And it's a journey. Don't expect to read this, believe this, and do it tomorrow. It's a journey. Look at Abraham. This was a man who heard the audible voice of God. God said, Leave your family. Go to a place of the shade. Abraham had not left his house before breaking the infrastructure. What did God say? Leave your family. Who did he take with him? His family. <laughs> forget about the day in the mountain, forget about the day in the mountain, he had not left the ring to make up. But it seemed like he obeyed God because taking his family, after all, was the human right thing to do. Even if you're coming back home, who's going to take the problem? Not the leader. It seemed like the right thing. What is right for us to do? If it's not a line with scripture, it's the wrong thing to do. What makes sense for us to do? If it's not a line with scripture, it's not the wrong thing to do. As believers, the God's word is the final authority. And that's what we want this afternoon. Because we'll learn some lessons in what I'm about to share with you. It shows why we must train ourselves. It will not be easy. There will be times when you want to feel like doing it. There will be times when you fall short. Because it's a righteous force at the times. So don't think that oh, because you're learning about how to become a big warrior. I mean, it's impossible. Let me say this to you. No one, none of us, even in this part of our people, can ever master it. It's a form of effort. Because we live in the flesh. What matters is not that you make mistakes. It's what you do when you make mistakes. How can God say to a man, the man can be my mom? Let's look at CD, murderer, adulterer. When God, you call him a man, have in your own heart. How does that make sense? God said that not because of what he did. God said it because of what he did when he fell short. David was always put to the tent. Developing the world is not when you cultivate a habit to be quick to repent. Because you will make mistakes. You will disobey God, even though you want to obey God. But what do you do when you realize I have disobeyed God, when I wanted to obey God, and when I should obey God, and you quit to repent? What makes you quit to repent is having a beautiful problem. Because you know what I've done is wrong. What makes you think like that? A beautiful problem. The Bible is very clear. Goodly sorrow. Not just any sorrow. Not at the back. That's the national one. That's not the job. Goodly sorrow leads one way. Where? To the hands of God. Goodly sorrow. Not, not all the sorrow. No feeling of feeling down. I feel sad. I feel discouraged. I feel let down. Those are feelings back to life. But they don't need to repent. Only Goodly sorrow. Only God is sorrow. And you will never have God is sorrow if you don't change the world. It's as simple as that. So, this is the important part of the biblical worldview. It gets you right with God. It's not about, oh, I need to have the biblical world so I can be a perfect Christian. The Bible says we are being perfect day by day. From the best of us to the least of us. The only day we achieve perfection is not in this life, it's in the life after when we go to be the Lord. But the Bible tells us that we will be, we will be known as the Spirit of God. We will be as He is. Christ is perfect. And we're not going to get that state of perfection until we see Christ face to face. But in the meantime, we don't have to be who we were yesterday. We can be better. This is why we're going to be able to do it. 
So I'm going to read some scripture to you very quickly. Second Peter, Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. My phone does <laughs> Second Peter chapter two. I'm going to read from verse one to eight. Look what the Bible says. Second Peter chapter two. Uh, Second Peter chapter. Uh, sorry, chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. I'm going to read from verse one to eight. Look what the Bible says. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained like precious faith in us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied in the inner knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as is the divine power, as given to us, and then we'll say, past tense, given to us all things that pertain to life and good. The Bible is very clear. The Bible existed for English existed. All things means all things. Husband, wife, job, car, and health, wealth, all things. What has been given us? All things. You can put your brackets in the way you look at it. Put that in that. All things. His divine power, not your power, his divine power, has given to us all things that pertain. Meaning that has to do with that pertains to life and godliness. I want to be the best in my job. I want to be the best in my career. All things. I want to have good health. All things. Good marriage. All things. Good person. All things. How can I get that? You don't have to get that. He's giving me that. All things. How? Through his divine. That's something you can do yourself. It's the Bible that you want to be completely right in godliness. Maybe you want to be better Christians for a chance and know God better. Grow in the prophetic gate, grow in the living of your life, put your assignment, put your work in all things. It's done via the divine. It's the divine power that you want to be able to take time in godliness through what? The knowledge of Him who calls us by the glory of God. Just about the same thing. I've given you all things. And that all things is in a gift bag. But until you know where the gift bag is, you are somebody, you are an individual who has all things but doesn't possess all things. all things and possess them until the gift. God said to Joshua, I can give you your hand. But go and possess it. So the journey of the believer is possessing our possession. It's not to make it happen, it's to possess our possession. Because the possession was given before you were seen. Let us think for a moment. God gave you all things before you were saved because they had you on his mind. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's the Bible that gives all things through the knowledge of him. So you do your thing to discern. If you don't try to get your goodness, your level of knowledge of God, your relationship with God determines how much of the things He has given to you you have to see. Because the deeper you go with God, the more you realize this more you have to say, Hallelujah. People say things like, Oh, I wish I had more anointing. And I wish I had more anointing. Or I should be seen that. All this we aspire to. It's not good to come just because you aspire to have it. We're going to dig deep. You see, everything that brings us is freely given, but it's expensive. You say, how about that? It's going to be free and expensive. Well, I don't do that. That's not the description. God said, salvation, did you bring salvation? Did you buy a ticket? Did you queue up? Did you send an email? Did you put a complaint to heaven? Salvation is free. But as free as salvation is, it wasn't for you. You're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's free, but it's expensive. There are things, there's a way that you're 
There's a way you would like to live your life. There's a way I would like to live my life. I may not be a people cross. We have to surrender our life and live with our life and to live. And just because you're saved does not mean you lose the desire to want to live in a certain way. It's expensive to deny what you would rather do or what he would rather have you do. So what God is saying is the vampire is giving us everything that exists in our godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises, meaning it is perpetual. That's why we start with the blessings of God, not the blessing, singular, the blessings of God are always what? Yes and amen. Do you know why they're always yes and amen? Because they're perpetual. That's why they're always yes and amen, not was yes and amen. Perpetually yes and amen. As long as you meet God's conditions, his response to the of his blessing for your life is always just an amen. You don't have to ask yourself, will God bless me? That's the wrong question. The question you ask yourself, what are the conditions for God to bless me? Because God has conditions. The Bible says, anyone who calls upon the name of God will be saved. That's the thing. So, don't want to worry about should I believe my faith in Christ? Will God accept it because such a happen? Or she says, I've seen them, I've been bringing to church, we're going to forgive them if they sin. It's a done deal. Anybody who happens to do what's going to be for the world shall be saved. What's the condition? All the money in the world. So sometimes we focus on the wrong part, ourselves the wrong questions, because we have a faulty worldview, faulty picture of who it is. So the Bible says, hey, by which we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. Hallelujah, glory to God. That's fine. But also for this very reason, give them all diligence. What do you need to do to act your faith? Act your faith, virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. Why would you persevere in Christianity? You only persevere because Christianity is never and never. There's a role of us around. Sometimes you don't like it. Sometimes you get sick of what you say. That's Christianity 101. But Jesus is the right to kill us at the time. God calls him yesterday. You're trying to die if you have a sickle to me. God calls you yesterday. Hallelujah. Look what the Bible says here. To not let self control, to self control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And then brotherly kindness and love. For if, it comes to condition, you have said God's conditions are always there. His promises are yesterday. What are the conditions that we need to pay attention to? But if these things are yours, meaning if these things are part of your life, if these things are indoctrinated into your mindset, that you live in, what things? Kindness. What things? Godliness. What things? Perseverance. What things? Self control. What things? Uh, virtue. What things? The faith. If all these things I've mentioned are yours, meaning they're part of your life. For if these things are yours and are bad, please never ignore the specifics of what it is. Don't say if these things are yours. Yeah, okay. No, no, that's not what he said. He said if these things are yours and are bad. What does that mean? If I keep the kindness, if I put the if I act my faith in knowledge of God progressively, and then I'm working that realization of what is in my knowledge. That's what we the text. The second step is, and I'm um, growing in it. Don't say, oh, I don't know how to say it. This is revelation. It's about the next two months. And you will grow in it. God's conditions. God said, if you meet my condition, I will deliver my promise. 
There is no promise of God that's not conditional. None. Call anybody to see you. There is no promise of God that is void of conditions. It's an interesting to our Lord's going to You will what? Be nothing of barren. Barren means there's no fruit in your life. I want to be successful in my career. No fruit. Relationship, no fruit. With your friends, with your, your, your friends, no, there's nothing there. It's just there. It's just certain stuff. There's nothing meaningful coming out of your life. You're missing barren. So, what is saying, we say amen to that, but the thing that we're thinking about is conditions. <laughs> God said, if the things are yours, see, this is no longer the case of what you can't be bothered in the end, you can't be bothered by the end. What's that? You can't be bothered. Well, that's fine. Don't complain that nothing happens to you. Don't complain that this is successful. Don't complain that we don't grow. Don't complain. Because God's not forcing you. He's telling the condition. So if the things are yours and abound, you will not be bothered, nor unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For if for he who lacks these things is short sighted, even to blindness, and have forgotten that he was planned. What is the Bible saying? Give you a quick summation for this. God is saying, if you're one of those people who think you're in a place, it's yourself. That can be bothered because I'm fighting and I'm walking and I'm losing. What's in the show side? Not the show side, you're actually dying. If somebody shows side, you still see a little bit with the help of glasses. You're short by the limit of blindness, and you've forgotten that you were cleansed from the world. You've forgotten where you used to be, who you used to go to crash. So, God is saying, unless are progressively making to know God deliberately, intentionally. The life you will produce is a life of barrenness. And this is not to an unbeliever. So serving God and growing things, but it's not an option. God did force you to be saved. He offered salvation to you and I. God does not force you to grow in Christ. He recommends it. But well, you need to make a decision. What do you want to do? Why do you want to for five years? Because of the outcome. Why do you want to find a particular role or job? Because of the benefit they can provide. Not because you're not going to have a seven to twelve people in Africa, going to your hospital, hospital chapter. Not only that. It's what you can get. So, you know, think about that. What do I have in my life to produce? And what does God have in my life? Man will offer so many things in this problem. Even man who means well, because there are people who mean well that you, you have in your life. And they will smile, not because they plan themselves. And it's beyond their control. I mean, it's like if I don't know how. Just try not to happen. I really had a plan, I was going to give you this job, but I don't want to happen. It's beyond the control. I can't blame you for it because you pay very good for you, very good for yourself. But the sole focus I know it doesn't happen to you. Even when that is happening, it's not taking place. You don't go next to fight. You can't look at it. It goes next to fight. And when you find out, you're so good. Oh, you're there, the witch, you're giving them the big thing. He's laughing. God never said, Oh, never. Because he knows all things. He sees all things. He comes to before you speak, before you pray, he knows what you're going to ask for. So there's nothing we can use to. So, and this is the person who's promising you the future that he will desire for you to Truthfulness, progression, joy, happiness. That's what he has to Heaven's condition. I need to get to know you. And they got and it might look like God is doing it to force you to have a relationship with them. No. In his holiness and in his righteousness and his infinite wisdom, God realized the 
potentially for you to attain the bliss of the attachment is to get to know right? Because it's all within in this person. Because how can you walk in the blessings of God without faith? And God has done it in such a way by everything God has provided for you and I. There is a key to unlock the door, and that is faith. And that's how God is establishing. And God can change that. Because God is it's like, what's your job before you work there? And I said to you, the rules are you get to work at nine of the door, you get to work at nine of five, you are deemed late. You might not so you want to like I get to attain the blessings of God, you can to change it. So you need to get with the program. And a lot of stress and problems that we're slow to get with the program. But God is straight out loud. This is the way it works. Nobody do not pay taxes. Pay that. But you with the program. We all know what happens when we pay taxes. You get with the program. So it's not about what I do in my life. It's if I can't change it, then we're the problem. So, it goes away for us to walk in the blessings of God by praying, by praying, by praying, by fasting. It's such a good fact. Everybody will be comfortable. But not many of them is a game. It comes to that last thing. It's not being there. Join me. So, God is showing us that He's going to take the things that we ever made in His life. But there's a cost. You must make a commitment to the rest of your life. Because the more you know God, the more you see different things, different understanding. Oh, okay, now I'm like, I don't like it. Man. Oh, I don't think it is. Why don't you do it day by day? John chapter 10, verse 10, very quickly. Look what the Bible says. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10. A thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I don't know that they may have life, but I have life in abundance. This is the Lord saying this to us. And the reason why he came to die for your sins is not just to save you from your sins. It's not just to save from the wrath of God, but to give you a life that's flowing with abundance. Yeah. Why do we say someone is wealthy? Because they got abundance of money. So when God's come to give you a life, life of abundance, it's talking about in the area of your family, in the area of your health, in the area of your mental health, emotional health, everything that pertains to your life. God wants you to give you what to do. You know, people say, like, Oh, I'm broke. So what did it to give you? What did it come to tell you more about so you get paid next month? It's going to give you abundance. What do you say? I'm going to give you a glass of water. What's it going to give you a glass of water? I've come to build your wealth. That's the first sign of a people. Through the knowledge of things, that's how it's happening. If I don't read my Bible, that I know I want to know about this. I'm going to be thirsty. I'm going to give you water. God said somebody, I'm going to tomorrow again. Somebody else, 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 Numbers chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 13. Look what the Bible says. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I have given to the children of Israel. What did God say? The land which I have given them. Meaning, I'm going to give them this land. My mind is made that I'm going to give them this land. There is no debate about it. This land will be theirs. And the Lord said to Moses, saying, Send them to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them, 
So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Aaron, according to the command of the Lord. All of them, men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now, these were their names from the tribe of Reuben, Shammah, son of Zaka, from the tribe of Simon, Shammah, son of Sorry, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephthah, from the tribe of Issachar, Edo, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Oshad, the son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Hathor, the son of Rachel, from the tribe of Zebulon, Gadi, the son of Sodom, from the tribe of Joseph, that is from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi, from the tribe of Ben, Ali, the son of Gemali, from the tribe of Asher, Sethel, the son of Michael, from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Boshi, from the tribe of that built the son of man. These are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called the uh, the son of Nun, Joshua. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountain and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. Whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or stronghold, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So the went and spied out the land from the wilderness of sin, as far as rebel and the angels of. Amat. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Hagim, Shesha, and Tamar with the seventh man of the king. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zor in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eskom. And there, and right there, they cut down a branch to one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Expo because of the custom which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. I want to understand that this time is in charge of 40 days. And it's interesting why they didn't get caught by the so called giant. Because they weren't running, they were carrying fruits with two men together. Trust me, they weren't running. Because I was not meant to the man carrying something like that. Or and he needs another man to carry it and then drop it. It's not possible. They were walking very fast. So they were walking. But through the grace of the giant. They were in a giant territory. Giant has hidden. You could be in the camp of the enemy. And in the grace of God's blood, the enemy will not see you. Notice in the story of Job, God had to open the eyes of the devil to Job. I've been considered by several Jews. So I'm going to protect him. That's what we never said. I'm not interested in what I'm not interested in what we never said. I'm not going to get the protection around him. That tells you that doesn't waste his time. If you can't touch him, doesn't bother him. That's why the Bible said the devil rolls around like a lion. He can never let him know. Who? He can never If you're covered by God, he's not going to watch your face. Because what's the person? What's the it's time to show. He goes from the plague Christian. One puts in, one puts in the club. One puts in the church, one puts in the club. That's the one he goes to. Because he knows you're not supposed to be in Now, and then the church was signed out the land. Now, the continent came back to most second with the congregation of the children of Israel the world was as Kaddish. They brought back the word to them and to all the congregation, showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of the land. Then there were in the land of the sun. The Hittites, Jerusalem, and the Amorites were in the mountain, and the Canaanites were by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession. 
for we are well able to overcome. But the men who have gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a battle for Israel, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone has is a land of the powers of the land. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Adam came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in this time. Don't you understand the perspective that we have? They said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. But most of the giants did not see them. Because if they did, they would need to tell the story. So how do you know you were like grasshoppers in the sky? Giants. Just because you saw yourself small does not mean that they saw you small. My sense, just because you think it is impossible, does not, that's not what makes it impossible. It's a mindset. Rather than the God of all things are possible. They looked at what the light was. But they majored on the challenge before them. Only for God was said, I'm giving this land, go and possess this. What well, we said that the Lord said, which it should have indicated, is the Lord who will enable them to possess it, is the Lord who will empower them to possess it. But they lost sight of all that. When we go speak to us, we say, I'm not the first, I'm not sure, I'm not qualified, I don't have this, but we have. The city is about us giving it up. You think God did not know your profile before you gave it away? You think God did not know that you're jumping the drop out? It's not a mistrust of God. There's nothing God tells you to do that He expects you to do by your grace. It's by His grace. Amen. And this is the first lesson we must learn. When God speaks to you, you speak from a place of grace. You don't speak from a place of Show me one person in the Bible that was talking about. Let me give you an example of what those who wrote, half of those who wrote the Bible were ex murderers. By human standards, they don't want to be ex Paul, ex murderer. Moses, ex murderer. And they wrote scripture. Man did not make them as scripture, God made them as scripture. So your qualification has nothing to do with it. People say, what's God, what's love to do with that? What's your qualification to do with it? It's got nothing. Nothing to do with it when God is concerned with man. So we don't follow God. You're too short, you're too tall. Oh, you're not this, you're not that. This is a long list. Who God's looking for to win this? God is looking for it. No, it's not. It's a winning really lesson. Because there's nothing else to do. You can't do it anyway. You can go your own patience. You can't do it. You would expect God to use the most educated people to write scripture. Yeah. And if they said that we were like grasshoppers, and so we were in their side, the Bible. You don't know how the giants saw or how they see. But from scripture, you know, they did not even see the giants. So how can you not conclude we were like grasshoppers in their side? But the lesson we want to learn from this text. When we have a faulty worldview, we have a earthly world which is limited. The power of the earthly world is sensual, it is uh, earthly, it is demonic. What demons can do is to enslave you, to keep you bound. That's what demons can do. So, any mindset that sets a limitation on you is demonic. It's demonic. It doesn't matter who is speaking it, doesn't matter where that revelation is coming from, doesn't matter what label the person. If what they're saying is demonic, it doesn't matter what office that person represents. What matters what comes out from that person. The Bible says, you know, you don't expect to see orange go from an apple tree. So don't look at the label, look at the message. You cannot do it. It's beyond you. You don't have what it takes. It's a demonic statement. Because God doesn't put limitation on man. Man is limitation. And they said, We are, let's go at once. What kind of thoughts are here? 
the real life, that people can't put into the fear of Satan. That's what it wants. Because he had a different mindset to the guys he was surrounded by. So the listening here comes to number one. Who are you surrounding yourself with? You want to develop a different mindset? Are you afraid of living? Do you offend bending into the world? It's not always possible to have all your friends like that. You might have some friends who are different to you, but they're not living there, they're not that, they're not even trying to. But it does work, you should never be close friends. They should never be close friends. But I've known it for 20 years, so what? They should never be close friends. Bible says, not with the seed, bad companies are still not close. But I'm a fire of God. Guess what? How do you preach fire? What's up? <laughs> Why do you think we're fine? If I can be preached. If they don't see it, they're fine. And they will preach your fire. It's a matter of time. Any friend that you have that's close, that's not safe, you just pass it to the preach. Well, I don't know, my friend, I've been down here. Are you, are you surprised? Are you surprised? Do not be the same. Back to the church tomorrow. God says, if you go close to the with people who are not saved, you corrupt yourself. You get infected. There'll be a virus. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Do what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Very clear scripture. Oh, but a good person. I know they're a good person, but they still be saved. Do you know that if someone's not saved, the devil is still alive. And if you hang around with them, you hang around with them. It's simple as that because when the devil is alive, he hang around with them, he has access to your life. Because your friends, whether you like it or not, influence you. For good or for bad. Even when you don't think they are. So if someone's been influenced by the devil, and that's the person who's speaking into your life, you can shout, shout, shout all you want. This is an influence. That company is called remote. Love them at a distance. Have a friendship with them because they're real to them. But you should never be your inner circle. They can't. And it didn't work, but they can't. It needs to be better. So let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. When I started to take those seriously, one of the hardest decisions I made, which was so painful, was to get rid of this thing. It was very painful. It was lonely to start with. But every day I didn't find the better. <laughs> Up to the power of my the kind of many things we have. And if there's a problem with the fire, and they're all strong with it. I don't have any close to me who are close to me who are strong with it. Not one. And it's deliberate. And I, I didn't go to make it happen. I took the decision that I want to serve God in my life totally with all my intentions for my closest to God. That are on the same line. I didn't have to make it happen. So sometimes I think myself, well, who should be my friend? Who should be my friend? Who should be my friend? I said, I'm not happy to be happy. I will not leave you as a friend. I will come to you. If God can give you Jesus, what is a friend? You know, if you can give you Christ, what is a friend? And I've spent my life, God gave me two friends. We don't speak every day. Sometimes I'm going to go for a couple of months and I'll speak. But when we speak, it's like we never ever stop speaking. So we stop and this is For when we come together, it's like we've been speaking every day. Because there's that sort of union and confidence and trust and edification of this place. And I encourage you to find friends like that. Even if you're sitting every day, you're speaking every day. Make time, you know, once a month, you know, get over there, catch up. Because we fall into each other. Hallelujah. Right. Numbers chapter 14, read from verse 1. 
Look at what it says. So all the congregation lifted up their voice, they cried, and the people wept that and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why have the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to refuse to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us let them leave and go to Egypt. The most of them fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, who were among those who had cried out of the land, tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy us is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then we will bring us into the land and give it to us. If the Lord delights when you try to affect the seven days of life, you focus on what if the Lord delights in us. Is this the way? What he was saying is, I wish I would love to present this plan. I wish I would like to have this plan. Hold on a minute. Let's make sure this is the will of God. It takes someone with a biblical mindset. It's not about possessing the land. It's not about taking the will of God. Look what to what? The land, Lord, will look at that. Two years later, it begins to the moment more. It's strong. It says, if, look what it says, the land that we're passed through is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, if we are pleased to God, if God is happy with us, then I'm sure He will. Bring us into the land and give it to us. Who will give you the victory? God. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. Hallelujah. When you have a biblical mindset, you look at the life of the faith, you might feel intimidated, but that was probably taking the necessary steps. So, there's nothing wrong with feeling intimidated or feeling fear. It's when you're allowed to stop your actual problems. Do you think David was not scared? Who was scared? That's why he tried it. That's why he tried it. He said, I'm going to go fit. Sometimes I have to say, it's not to get to a place of pain when you face a challenge. Sometimes I don't go. Challenge. Then I take it on. That's not for me. That's not the human experience. We feel fear, we want to take a step back, first of all, analyze the situation, and then what we remind ourselves that greater is he to us than he is to the world. So, never put yourself down because when you face the challenge, your first response is not, I want to cut off the bread. That's not natural. That's not what it does. There's nobody in the way trying to show up. Who's that? The door? Challenge? Come on, get it. That's a natural human response. But the spirit begins to grow, then you take a step forward. So don't look at yourself that way when you take responses to it. It's natural. But you don't stay that. That's what happened in this text of the church. Caleb said, Eat the Lord. The light in us, then it will bring us to this land and give it to us. The land which goes with milk and honey. So they were dependent on God through and through. Only do not rebel against the Lord, but fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Look at the mindset. They are our bread. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Do you have a mindset that when you go through the tribulation that the Lord is with me? So that's not what I feel. That's not what I see. I am choosing not to fear. I'm not choosing not to fear because fear is not real. I'm not choosing not to fear because I don't feel the prayer. I'm choosing not to fear because I know that fear stops you and I because we believe that our time will not be in our faith. The courageous still fear. The timid 
feel fit. So why do the courageous take action? Because they believe it will be their favor. We must be people by not this because God of our flock, it will be in our favor. I might have some bruises. I might take one or two long cuts. But guess what? It will be in my favor. Oh, you've been taken out by God. He will take you out. How many books did you see? And that's the question. Oh, I just touched the first third. I don't want to judge. I'm not too good. I'm pretty good. I'm not too good. I'm not too good. I'm not If you don't take a hit, then you're going to box. You're going to box. You're going to box. You're going to box. You can't go and bring a box. You might not be sure. You need to take some box. You can't be a prison in my life. You need to take some hits. But well, you will come. Hallelujah. All these are rebel against the Lord, but then the people of the For they are the brain. And you know, they challenge us. It is the brain. It's there to be eaten, it's there to be taken. You know how much confidence that will give you if you look at your challenges? Oh, they're just important. I don't know why you just said dessert. You just start. The Jew of the people. Only to not rebel against the Lord and offend the people of the land. For they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them. Why can they say that they know God is stupid and this is our land? So if God is saying this is our land and it's full of us, who can be against them? He said, Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. They have said, they are the protections that pass upon them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Verse 10. And all the congregation sent to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord came in the tabernacle before all the children of Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, He's going to show us what he feels when he gives us. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed amongst them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation of a nation greater and mightier than they. What is that? Unbelief in me to give this. Scary. You can lose your inheritance to the Lord. The Lord said, I will strike them and disinherit them. And I will make you, I will make your nation greater and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will say, They will hear it. For by the might you brought those people out from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people. But you, Lord, have seen, um, have seen face to face, and your cloud has brought them. And you go before them and fill up the cloud by day and fill up the cloud by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations which have heard of the thing who speak, saying, Because the Lord was able to bring these people to the land which he swore to give them, therefore he killed them in the wilderness. And now I pray. Let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is not suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiven iniquity and transgression, but he by no means kills. God is revealing himself to us. I can tell a black guy here and there, but if you are there's somebody who has been guilty, the tool is faithful. He said, He by no means. By no way, under no circumstances, same God who is long suffering, same God who is abundant in mercy, same God who is forgiven iniquity and transgressions, is the same God who said, By no means, there is a new Sin has wages and God pays. By no means, there is a new time. The iniquity of the fathers from the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people, Egypt, until now. 
Then the Lord said, I found according to your word. But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord because of this man who has seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now this same time. They've taken the three times. That's why all of the miracles of God. That's why all the provision, they tested in the same time. Let me change that word. They I want to say, I will understand if I can pray with you. I will understand if I cannot feed you. I will understand that that's why my miracles, that's why feeding you, that's why giving the breakthrough, you see, doubting me 10 times and I've had it now. You know, for most of you, I'm going to out right there. And they are put into the test now the same times. I have not heeded my voice. They certainly. Can you see the God of love and mercy one time at a time? Okay, I'm telling you, sis, I'm not going to kill you. Verse. Righteousness is done wrong, judgment. I've heard what you're saying, I'm not going to kill them, but they're never going to kill them. Look what the Bible said here. <laughs> they certainly shall not see the land in which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. So it was. It was the will of the words that happened, but their actions disinherited them from it. Now, this is, they, they certainly shall not see the life of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall they, nor shall any of those who rejected the seed. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit, let's call that a pure in him. And has followed me fully. I will bring you to the land. I will, I will bring you to the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. God said, You are talking spies. But I see sweeping who is following me fully. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, we did this in the name. We did that in the name. I'll say, We did this in the name. You know what? But not everybody is doing the question is, are you following God fully? In your decision making, in your response to life, the challenges you face, the ups and downs, are you following God fully? Or is only when things are going well that you follow God? When things take a downturn, it's like a million force. And I say, I'll be your eyes. God sees all these things. Look at it, and this guy's going to be specific in this whole text. The other guy, I told you, I'm going to go sign the line. We're not privy to this conversation. So they, they tell us, okay, we're still going to the land of Canada. We're still going to the land of Canada. But they don't know that for us. Very, very interesting point. What we see in this text is basically this. Number one, I talked about it earlier. Get rid of the negative people who have them around you. Definitely Number two, you need to make it. Commitment to yourself to depend completely on the grace of God, your guardians of hopes in the hand of God. Notice that Caleb is affected by what the other spies were doing. Caleb was in the wilderness for 40 years, just like they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Caleb saw the giants, just like they saw the giants. Caleb felt the fear, just like they felt the fear. But it was more than his worldview was different, and his worldview enabled him to experience what God had for him for only three attempts. So, this shows you the benefit of having a great worldview because if you want to know your worldview, it has limitations. They had a couple worldview, but look at the challenges so we can't go ahead and limitations. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, our thoughts create an emotion. Our emotions create a reaction. Our reaction creates an action. Our action produces a result. Our result, good or bad, and which is why the bad part of all the things, is all interlinked. Think bad, produce bad. Think good, 
produced it. It's the same as I said, Lord, it's irreversible, it's not flexible. It's a set law. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter. No, oh, hold on a second. Let's go to Numbers chapter 32. Numbers chapter 32, verse 11 to 13. Put it up. Numbers chapter 32, verse 11 to 13. Because they did not follow me completely, none of the men, 20 years old or more, will be able to teach us the land I was looking Abraham, Adam, and Jacob. None except the son of Jacob, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun. Because they did what? Follow the law. Again, the promises was obtained for everybody, but only few attained the promise. What set them apart? They follow the law completely. Very important thought. Abraham has been taken. None of them except Caleb, son of Jacob, Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, uh, because they follow the law completely. The Lord's anger burned against Israel, and they made their wonder in the wilderness for 40 years. Unto the whole generation that had done what was even the lost side. So those who were complaining, God, this God, this God, God, God was going to kill them right there. But this one was interceding. Because I'm going to kill them right now. But this one, I'm going to waste the time. <laughs> that is, I'm going to waste their time. You want to complain? No, this one, this one. They complain for 40 years. That's the longest complaint. For 40 years, they complained, they went very low. Imagine around the circle, they very low. You always say, Oh, is that? Oh, no, I'm very wrong. Is that? Oh, is that? Yes. Because they complained. But Caleb was going with them as well for 40 years. But this time, 40 years, they still entered. What's the difference? Because they obeyed God fully. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 34 to 36. When the Lord heard the words, now some of you think, I'm thinking it. So God doesn't know it. If you're thinking it, you know, you're speaking it, you know. If you're thinking, you might think it, you know. When the Lord heard the words, he grew angry and swore off. None of this man in this new generation will see the good land I swore Except he left the son of Jacob. He was created. And he will give it to him and his descendants, the land on which he has set foot. Because he followed the law. Message. Follow the law completely. Now, let's move on. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 to 14. Let's see something interesting. The descendants of Judah approached Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Judah, said to him, You know what the Lord promised Moses, the man of God, and the about you and me. Listen to this. I was 40 years old when Moses, the Lord, said to the Lord, and the to scatter the land, and I brought back an honest report. My brothers who went with me caused the people's hearts to melt with fear. But I will be loyal to the Lord my God. On that day, Moses promised me the land where you have set foot will be an inheritance for you and your descendants forever, because you have remained loyal to the Lord my God. As you see, the Lord has kept me alive. Who's kept me alive? The Lord. This 45 years, as I promised, says the Lord spoke it. Word to Moses while Israel was. Traveling in the wilderness. Here I am today. <laughs> I am still as strong today as I was the day Moses set me out. My strength and for daily task is now as it was then. Now give me this ill country. The Lord promised me from that day because you heard then that the Hanukkah are there as well as large house by city. Now be with me and I will drive them. The Lord promised. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, as an inheritance to this day. 
because he may walk. You see, sometimes we go to things that are and we go round and round in circle. Not because God changed his mind, but because we fail to remain in the way. Healthy is a of We fail to remain in Do you think Joshua was happy for 40 years not saying the promise? He believed that everything is in the Who will show me? Do we have a mindset that no matter what we have, the ups and downs, the good times, the bad times, is that we really need to keep turning away from God? Because the only salvation we have is God. And turning away from God doesn't make things better, it makes things worse. Staying on the journey of the life when it's difficult, where you pray for breakthrough, is like pray for breakthrough, so I have to It's heart wrenching, it's discouraging, but I was going to first. Makes the upper sick. So you feel it's sick and tired. It's what you're waiting for something that hasn't happened. Best time, all to go the friend, the pastor. The question is, you ask us, I'm not going to get any pain. We don't get to choose when the feeling will come. We don't get to choose when the breakthrough will come. We don't get to choose how it will come. But if you remain lonely, we shall see salvation. It's a scripture. Nobody will say, Come on, give me 45 minutes for this. No. If I went in there, I'm going to go right now. One year we were in the opposition, my kid was like, Two years, three years. Well, okay, because we were so loud that the person who promised me can never laugh. We need to develop a biblical worldview where we know that I might not be happy, it's taking me long. I might not be happy that I see my mother is happy around me. But the one who has promised is not a man. He's not a man. The last second, they cause the total man nothing except love. So if I'm believing God for the breakthrough, and it hasn't happened, then he owes me. And if then God fails to keep his word, he has to cease from being God. And that never happened. Because it was seen from the God all of hell and great people. And that never happened. So, which means he will perform his word. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell Jesus today as we're talking about this. So, really, something about the things you're working on. I want to show you some questions in the scripture. Do you know what is a sin? What is a sin? And we come to an acceptance. Feeling an emotion of worry is not a sin. It's the state of worry that is a sin. Because some people think that the value is actually when you make you worry. It's not natural. But it's when you remain in that state, you can then take on that out of the relationship. And it was a sin in a minute. If you go turn the Bible and read quickly to the book of Psalm 78, Psalm 78. Uh, there's one to twenty-two. Look at the Bible says, "My people, hear my instruction. Listen to what I say. I will declare wise things. I will speak mysteries from the past. Things we have heard and known in that our hearts have passed down to us. We must not hide them from their children, but must tell the future generation the praises of the Lord. He is mine, and the wonderful works He has performed. He has established the testimony in Jacob." And set up the law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, so that in future generations, children yet to be born, might know they were to recognize and tell the children, so that they might put their confidence in God and not forget God's words, or keep his commandments. Then they would not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not loyal. And whose spirit was not painful to God. The Ephraimites, Hutchers, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by His law. They forgot what He had done, the wonderful works He had shown them. He worked wonders in the sight of the land of Egypt, the region of Zor. He split the sea and brought them across the waters, stood firm like a wall. He led them with the cloud by day and with the fair. By night, throughout the night, 
the spirit was in the wilderness and gave them drink as abundant as the depth. He brought them streams out of the storm and made water flow down like rivers. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They deliberately tempted God, demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Is God able to provide food in the wilderness? Look, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Currents overflow, but can he also provide bread or furnish meat for, for his people? Therefore, the Lord turned to them and became furious. Their fire broke out against Jacob, their anger fled up against Israel because they did not believe God nor the lack of his salvation. They did not trust God or the lack of his salvation. Salvation is not limited to That is in safe and eternal damnation. Salvation also speaks about God being able to salvage you from things that he was going to show you. They had a lack, and let's go to the back. And God is provided so many times. It's also the point he said to the man, a particular type of provision for God. And when God provided us, can he do this? He provided, can he do that? Can he do this? And there's a summer back in their life. They didn't trust, they don't trust me. They were made of all of this, they don't trust me. They don't believe my salvation. When we want it, we put God on us. We say, God, you're not intended. God, you cannot be trusted. God, you might not be bad. It's a defamation of God's character when we worry. When God says, I will provide you and we doubt what they think about us, we are accusing them, we are, we are calling in a lie. And that makes God angry. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, what should we do instead? Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 68. Look what the Bible says. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which is possible, understanding without your past in Christ Jesus, I have the purpose. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is not, whatever is commendable, if there is any more truth, if there is any place, dwell on those things. And you know that when you find some of the set of worries, it's not because of what you felt, what you felt. Necessarily postpone is what you do well. If you can worry, this will be the most important. Without the meditate of the word of God, day and night, so you can have your success. But instead of spending your time and energy worrying about it, meditate God's word. Meditate. It takes a certain amount of energy to worry, then just meditate. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, speak very quickly. Look at the Bible says here. Genesis chapter, uh, the Genesis, the picture one chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. You must be kept, you must kept to follow every command I'm being explained, so that you may live and increase and may enter to take possession of the land of God's force of power. Remember that the Lord your God led you on the entire journey in this 14 years. Years in the wilderness, so that he can humble you and test you to know what was to come. Some of the things we go through in life are more difficult, some challenges, and unfair difficulties, and God tests us. Sometimes God deliberately humbles us so that what in our heart can be revealed to us and to him. So it's not sometimes not the devil, sometimes it's God humbling you because he sees the need to do so. Look, he humbled you by letting you go hungry. Then he gave you manna to eat, which you and your fathers have not known, so that you might learn that man on bread alone by any word that comes from the mouth of the living God. If you're not a person who embraces this truth, that I must totally depend on God for the kingdom of God, the only option you give God is to humble you. And that is if you don't deliberately embrace the idea that I am a 
based on the grace of God. Everybody wants the grace of God. Promotion of work and the grace of God. Success and the grace of God. And the grace of God. They all teach masters and the grace of God. You need one more choice. You to humble you. And when the humbles you, you know what's favorite about when the humbles you? You don't know when to start. When you humble yourself, you know when it starts, when it and it does it, it goes up. You just see very few every day. Also, also, God decides to do the wisdom. You can be here, you can see his confidence. So, God is saying, I've done certain things, I've done certain things. I'm praying, I'm binding. This is why. If you're praying and binding, I'm trying to do it. Not because you lost authority, if you just be there for it. You did not hear. So God's saying that so that you might learn that man is not living with him, but on every way man is not living with him. Your clothing did not wear out, and your feet did not swell this 40 years. Guess why you're trying this? You did not die. You did not die. It was difficult. It was painful for you to live your Would you think you're you It's God. It's God. Keep in mind that the Lord drove. God has been disciplining you just as a man disciplined his son. So keep the command of the Lord. For the Lord of God is bringing you into a good life and a street of water, springs and springs and deep water sources flowing in both valleys and here. The land of the valley finds space in the pomegranate. The land of all the and basically a fruitful land. So when we understand that we must live our by the grace of God. Every time we come to the by the grace of God. Want to be a better Christian by the grace of God. Once I come to an understanding of that, you can rest assured that God will bring you to a fruitful land. But it takes you to change your worldview to a Christian doctrine. Because if your worldview is still earthly, you say, well, what can I do? I follow the name of God. Man made you love, but God did not make you. God not make you learn. Man said, no, go, go, you must change your world. Through. Last week, Jacob never closed. Luke chapter 12, verse 22 to 26. Then he said to the disciples, therefore, I, therefore, don't worry about your life. What you will eat or about the body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than food. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or eat. They don't have a story or a bond. It feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than the birth? Can any of you add a cubit to his time? I worry. If then you are not able to do even a little thing, as I worry about our best. God is saying, when you worry, you're saying, pages are better than me. You're saying, maybe it's so better than me. When we worry, literally, you're saying, Pigeons are better than So they don't worry about God's peace. They go to say, go back to the pigeons. So I want to encourage you to stick to the change our world. Because it is a change our world. We've seen ourselves in the living scripture. It's what will help us to grow, overcome, and be who God wants us to be. And have what God wants us to have. Hallelujah. Can we transfer our feet, please? We reach you, ah, Yahweh, Yahweh, your Yahweh, 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 we reach you, ah. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are the Lord. Yahweh, Yahweh, we lift you up. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are the Lord. Yahweh. We'll meet you. Yeah, 
I just want to encourage our believers with us. If we were made standing, we're going to take our tithes and our offerings down on the of the service. If I can encourage with those who are joining us to really make sure that on a Sunday, I will take around the basket. Um, on a Sunday, that uh, you're with us live at 11 a.m. It's at Trinity at both Methodist Church Powers to Road, 11 a.m. every single Sunday. We also want to invite you to our weekly Zoom prayer sessions at 9 p.m. on a Monday. Monday at 9 p.m. we pray for relationships, we pray for marriages. We want to make sure that you're with us by. And every Thursday, so if you've been touched by the message today, on Thursday we have Bible study and we will be going through this message in depth. So we want to encourage you to join us by noon on Thursday and by Zoom on Monday for our sessions. Father, we just want to pray this afternoon as we've come into your presence to give our tithes and our offerings, Lord. We just want to thank you, Father, for your other God, who indeed provides for us, Lord. I think that's the word that's accomplished us today, Lord, that we don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious about physical needs or enemies that we have, Lord, because you are our shepherd. We have no reason to lack. We have no reason to want, because you are able to provide for us. Like you are God who holds a cattle and that's a hills for me. Father, you can create something out of nothing. So we come to you this afternoon, Lord, to trust you. And we say, for every single person that has given today, for those who are, for whatever reason, struggling to give, Lord, we pray that you will increase the provision in their pockets, in their purses, in their bags, Lord, we pray for those who have businesses and give them increase in their businesses. For those who are working, Lord, in their workplaces, in their places of employment, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right to them for anybody working in a toxic, difficult environment in this season, that you give them peace of favor, even in the midst of chaos so far. We pray right to them that when they put evangelists are pleasing to the Lord, even as enemies are pleased with them. Father, we pray for every single one of us that we leave your presence, we leave this service, we go into our workplaces, we go into the market. Even our enemies, even people that they don't believe in you, they will have, they won't be able to explain it, but they will have reason to say there is something different about this person. They will enlighten and embrace of this person's life. They will show them favor even when they can't explain why. I will pray that you cover every single person in their workplaces, Lord, that they will not be infected by the culture around them, but instead they will be able to hold themselves strong. To have their faith and to influence the atmosphere of anywhere that they are working with the power and the spirit of God. Father, oh, we bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just as I think about this change to lead us in uh, our confession, the picture that came to mind while I was praying was just for people in the workplace, as you can see, I focused on that. People are all praying, what time are praying? But I just wanted to encourage all of us, all of us. Who are doing jobs, you know, who are doing secular jobs, even jobs within ministry, just to encourage you to make sure that your ways are pleasing to the Lord. Make 
to the new in your personal life are right with God. It's even that difficult manager that just put the point of God can make it in such a way that even they will show you favor and grace. I have to show you favor and grace. It's not for you to be late. It's not for you to do the job. It's because even when they have a difficult relationship with everybody else, for you, they will see the grace of God. Just don't find anything else. Speaking to a friend uh, a few days ago, she's not a believer yet. Yet, I'm working on it. It's crazy that she won't be in Jesus' name. And I was telling her about the testimony, uh, which was fantastic. And I was telling her the testimony, and she was saying, You know what? There was something happening in my life. I was connected with somebody within the health system, a nurse or something. I just know that she's a Christian. So there's a something about her. This is something that's not a believer. There's something about her, and when she told me a couple of things that this lady said, yeah, she probably is. And you see, unbelievers can tell there's something different about you. So don't take it for granted. Let your ways be pleasing to the Lord, because you never know what that might just be all God needs for you to get in front of that person. That might not be your destination, that job, but it's just for you to connect with that person so that that person can at least be what it looks like for them to connect with Jesus. And it connects with Jesus for you. And then the Bible says, "Shake up the We need you, Lord. Yeah. Welcome to My Identity in Christ Church. 
Our church vision is to establish Christ at the center of people's lives. We will accomplish this goal through our church mission initiatives, which is to teach people how to discover their purpose and fulfill it. Discover their identity in Christ and embrace it. Build godly relationships and marriages that glorify God on the earth. This is what success looks like to us. Seeing people walking in their identity, seeing people living a life of purpose, having Christ-centered relationships. This is what success looks like to us. We see a church that helps you to be more Christ-like at work. We see a church that helps you to be more Christ-like in your families. We see a church that teaches you, disciples you on how to develop a closer intimacy with God. We see a church that helps you and encourages you to develop your gifts and talents. Our goal as a church is to have impacted the lives of one million people by the 31st of December 2030. My identity in Christ Church is not just a place where people gather. This is a church that's on the move to disciple people and see Jesus Christ at the center of everything they do and experience in their lives. For more information and on how you can be part of this vision, please feel free.